Welcome to the Bloomingdale Public Library's program, Getting Familiar with Mac OS. For the patrons that visit our computer lab, you'll notice that we don't have any Apple computers there. You can still take advantage of our library Wi-Fi and bring your own laptop, MacBook, to use at the library. You also have an opportunity to use Wi-Fi printing that is located behind the adult reference desk. Now, this program also is geared towards anyone that is trying to use a computer that may not know how to use a Mac computer and also somebody that may have some experience with Windows computers it has an interest in getting a little bit of an introduction to the Mac OS which is short for operating system. Like most other desktop operating systems Mac OS uses a desktop as a temporary workspace on which to store files. Hard drives, external drives, and mounted disk images will all appear here when you connect it when connected to your machine. You can right click to create folders and drag to arrange your desktop as you see fit. At the top of the screen, the menu bar changes based on the app currently in focus. These are the apps located in the dock at the bottom of the screen. I will select one of these apps and you can see that the menu bar did change based on the app currently in focus and currently the focus is on the Safari app. That, and this is the icon for the Safari app. If I minimize that and I select anywhere in the desktop it will go back to the finder. Going to the Apple menu this is where you can shut down your machine and access information related to your Mac under the About This Mac option. If we select it, you'll get this pop-up. Depending on your machine, you'll get a different message here. In this case, our machine here at the library is operating under Mac OS Big Sur. You can get the year of the model. This one's 2013, over 11 years old, but it even got updates as recently as last week in 2024. So that's great. Going back to the menu bar, it also displays application options like File, Edit, and Help. On the right side of the menu bar are status indicators for system and third-party apps. These include Wi-Fi and battery meters, as well as apps that you have running in the background. So over here, you can adjust the sound with the speaker icon. You can also connect to a library Wi-Fi or whatever Wi-Fi network that you have near you by selecting one of these preferred networks. You could turn off Wi-Fi by pressing this little toggle and turn it back on. And if you've connected to that network before, it will automatically reconnect you. If you have Bluetooth devices you'd like to pair with your MacBook, you can select this Bluetooth button here on the top, activate that, and then from there you can select Bluetooth preferences to make the necessary connections or pairing, as they say. Uh, we don't have any devices nearby right now, so you're not going to see anything as discoverable. I'll turn that off. But if there were anything, you would see it here. And selecting the date and time will give you some information about the day, the weather, if you have that set up. These are little widgets on the side and some news. Of course, you can adjust these things and you can edit them or move them by right clicking on them. You can rearrange these items by holding command on your keyboard. It has the infinity loop next to the spacebar. You press that while clicking and dragging. If you do that without the command it won't move with you. But holding down the command button will allow you to move and drag these around. Now let's put our attention to the dock. The dock is the closest equivalent Mac OS has to a Windows Start menu if you're familiar with the Windows Start menu, it's divided into two parts. Shortcuts to apps are on the left side, and pinned folders 
or minimize windows will be on the right side. So minimize windows, for example, my Safari web browser window is minimized right now, and you'll see that. If I press this yellow button, which is to minimize the window, it'll go down to the dock once again on the right side. You can arrange the dock to appear along the bottom, left, or right edges of the screen under system preferences. So you would have to go to the Apple once again on the top left. Go to system preferences and then find dock. And there it is, dock and menu bar. So right here it says position on screen and currently it's set to bottom. If you prefer, you can set it to the left, you can set it to the right. I'll keep it on the bottom, that's fine for me. You can also adjust the size of the dock We can automatically hide and show the dock. I will return it to the bottom because I think that's ideal for me right now. You can automatically hide and show the menu bar as well, which is at the top. But that is to your preference. Once again, that was the Apple icon system preferences and then the dock and menu bar you can launch pin apps by clicking on them so I clicked on the photos app apps that aren't pinned will also show up on the dock when they're used so let's go ahead and close this out and if I go over to the finder app and then select applications. We have quite a few different applications here. Uh, one of them that isn't on the dock right now is the Stickies app. I'll select that one. And as you see here, the icon appears. And you can right click on it and press quit, or you can go up to the top, select the, the name Stickies, and then press quit stickies or while it's highlighted the app that is and you can always tell by looking up here to see which app is being in use so if, if I had Safari open right now you will see that Safari at the top appears if you were to press the command key on your keyboard next to the spacebar and then press Q that will close and quit that program you can do the same for other apps as long as you see that their name is at the top here pressing command plus Q will exit out of that app now going back to the dock you can also drag icons out of the dock and release to remove them so for example I have numbers or pages or keynote I can just grab podcasts I'll take that one out so I hold it drag it off of the dock put it onto the desktop and it goes away. You can also right click on the icon. So for example, we had news open. I'm going to close that out by pressing command plus Q. And I'm also going to right click on the icon directly. You get a few different options here. If you hover over options, remove from dock, open at login, show in finder, you can just remove it from the dock. Dragging a file over an app icon and releasing will open the file in the app, assuming the app is compatible with the file. Here we have a sample video. This icon, VLC, is a media player. What I'm going to do is drag this video over on top of the icon and let's see what happens. All right, so we get a pop-up that would like to access files on the desktop folder, and I'm going to say OK. And there it is. In the other right-hand section, you'll find a few pin folders and the trash. Drag any folder into the dock to pin it. You can right-click on it to tweak its display, and you can drag files into the folder to move them there. If I were to select it one time, you'll see the contents of that folder. Of course you can change that 
display anytime you like. And that's by right clicking. Feel free to make the adjustments to your liking. You can also just drag that item, that file, and bring it back to the desktop if you like. And then you can also drag it into the trash to remove it. However, the file isn't completely gone until you actually open the trash can and take a look at the contents. Highlight everything with your mouse if you like. You can right click on them and you can empty the trash, but I want to keep that video, so I'm going to return it to the desktop. And then I'll close this out, and I want to delete everything from the trash, so I'll right click on the trash can and press empty trash with the left click. You'll get a little pop up to ask you if you are sure, and in this case I am, I'm going to press empty trash. Finally, if you want to remove a mounted drive or disk image, you would simply do the same thing by dragging it over to the trash can as well. I'm adding my USB thumb drive to the USB port on the side of my MacBook. And there it is, ESD USB. You can open it to see the contents of the folder. And then if you want to eject the USB safely, you would select that icon and then drag it over to what well, was the trash can, which is the eject button currently, and then you let go. If you're using the trackpad, or if you're using the left click on the mouse. Now let's talk about the Finder app. Actually, the Finder is the default macOS file management app. And just like Windows Explorer, Finder lets you browse your hard drives and other connected devices. And the Finder app looks just like this, with this happy face. You'll also see that it shows up here in the menu by default. When you select the Finder app, you'll get a window that'll appear. And there are several components to the Finder window which you can toggle under the View Menu Bar item. I'm going to navigate first to another folder. That is the Movies folder here. Drag the window to the right to make it a little larger, moving it over. So we can display the files here in different views. For example, right now we have an icon view where all these files are represented as icons and this is something you may see in Windows computers as well. You can also set it up so it basically displays all your files as a list and you get a few more details like the modified date and the size of the file and the type of file it is. You can also use the column view where it will show you different columns. This indicates the folder and within that folder this next column shows us the files. You select a different folder in this column you'll get in the second column different files that are contained within that folder. You also have another option here which will give you previews of those files and the information on the side here that gives you uh, date created and modified and dimensions if it's a video and it'll show up differently depending on the kind of file that it is. Now back on the desktop, if you're familiar with Windows Control C plus Control V, basically what that allows you to do is copy files and then paste files, make copies of those files. You can do the same thing on a Mac, except it's a little different. Instead of using the button Control plus C, you're going to use the button Command plus C. So highlight the file that you'd like to copy press the letter command plus the letter C. That will copy the file and you won't see anything happen right away. You might even see a little bit of a animation up top here but that's all you're gonna see in edit. The next thing you'll do is you just press command plus the letter V and it will create a copy of that file. Now I'll delete that file real quick and show you another way to do that by right clicking on the file selecting copy in the menu and then right clicking paste item and now create a copy of the file just like the other method I should say you can also just click duplicate and that'll do the same thing for you the next thing I'd like to talk about is spotlight Spotlight is the name of your Mac search engine and it appears in a floating window anytime you press the, the key command plus the key space. 
and they're right next to each other and when you do that this appears simply type your query and Mac OS will respond with context sensitive results hit enter to action the top result or scroll through whatever spotlight has found for you till you find what you're looking for in this case I want the definition of duck and there it is right there I'll select that and on the side you'll get the definition of duck but if I change my mind and actually what I was looking for was DuckDuckGo which is a private browser that top button here that top search result we can select that and then this will give us some information a description and it is a utility we can view it in the App Store because it is an app or we can go to the website which is the other options one of the options down here and we can press enter and what that'll do since it's a website it's going to open our website uh, through the, the default web browser that we have on Mac OS which is Safari just so you're familiar with what this looks like this is the Safari web browser and it opened up the website DuckDuckGo.com for us now if I press command plus Q that'll close that out and then I can press command plus the space bar to retrieve the spotlight bar and then I can search for something else but this handy search tool works not just for finding web pages it also works for finding files it also can launch your applications so for example I'll type in sample video to open a file and you can see here these are some search results but the file that I'm looking for is right here and it will play it or let's say I want to open the Safari app and the very top result is safari.app and that will launch the app now close that out you can also do something like currency conversion so let's say for example a hundred US dollars to Japanese yen which is JPY and you can get the result and we can also do some basic calculations so 10 plus 10 and you see here the top result is the calculation and then if you click on the desktop it'll go away now let's talk about applications most applications you download from the web will show up as a disk image or DMG files that's how they'll look at first so for example let's go ahead and look up Google Chrome so right now we have Safari as our default web browser and we get this pop-up to ask us if we're sure we want to download this and allow it and I say yes allow it will be giving you a little indicator here on the top right to show you that it's downloading and once it downloads well you see here it's Google Chrome DMG but once it's complete you'll be able to navigate to the folder the downloads folder that is and you'll be able to access the file there it goes let's go ahead and close out the Safari web browser for now I will drag this Google Chrome DMG file over to the desktop and we will double click on it and there it is it shows up mounted on the desktop after which it will show up to Mac OS like a read only drive drag the application app file to your applications folder to install it once the installation completes you can check your applications folder for the app that you just installed and there it is I see it Google Chrome app you can open it up and it will appear in the dock we can close out of this we can also delete the DMG file we don't need that anymore we could also eject that as well because we've installed the app keep in mind deleting the app file from this applications folder will remove the app from your system as well we didn't do that when we deleted the DMG and the mounted file on the desktop 
so we still have the application. Just be aware that you'll get a couple of different prompts to make sure that you're okay with opening that particular application. If you're okay, press open. And we are. We trust this application, so we'll go ahead and open it up. Then you'll get a couple of notifications here on the right, and it will also ask you to do a few other things depending on the application that you're installing. But once you've done all that, there it is. We have the Google Chrome app installed on our Mac OS system. And you can access the App Store by going up to the Apple icon and selecting App Store. And from here, you can find apps. For example, I'll type in Screen Recorder. We'll get some results. And in order to use the App Store, you will need to sign in with your Apple account ID or your iCloud ID to get these files. Another thing to note about the Mac OS system is that you have access to a lot of things that are related to your iCloud account. So if you have an iPhone and you're taking pictures, you're using text messages, if you sign in to the MacBook, you can also use those features on the MacBook or your iMac, whatever kind of Apple-based computer that you have at home or with you. If you sign in, you would sign in with the same inf information that you have on your phone. So it would be your Apple ID plus your password. I don't have one of those to show right now, but that would give you access to all the things that you have on your phone as long as you sync up everything. Uh, so you would have Photos, which is the Photos app here. If you have Photos on your phone and you have your Apple ID synced up with your MacBook, you would be able to view those here. The same with the mailbox, the messages, and your notes, and your calendar. All of these things can be tied and connected to your phone. Of course, you can use a few of these different things without that. Um, it is a nice handy feature that is exclusive for iPhone users, uh, where you can share that back and forth between the devices. We have two photos here. When we open them, it opens a program called Preview, where we can then look at the files. You don't have much in the way of editing the files here, but you can at least view them. And just so you're aware, it is exclusive and different from the Photos app, where that's a library for your photos that you take but you can still open up individual files, photo files, directly with Preview. Now, opening up system preferences, we have a few different things that we can go over that we didn't mention before. For example, if we select General, we have the ability to change the appearance of the Mac system. So, at the very top, you can adjust it to be light, dark, or set to auto based on the time of the day. I'll go back to dark because that's what we had originally. You can also change the color, the accents, that is. And all this is, you know, to your preference, however you like it. There's no. Now, if you need a word processor on MacBook to type, you can use the app Pages. And Something like this will appear where you have some templates at the bottom. You have a blank landscape. I'm going to use the very first option here. And from here, you can type. That concludes this program for getting familiar with Mac OS. If you do have any questions regarding the Mac OS system, you can come into the computer lab and ask any of us at the service desk there, the help desk, and we would be more than happy to assist you uh, with your questions. If you want to keep learning, you can go to our website, mybpl.org, then select online courses under the learn bar here, and you can select LinkedIn Learning. LinkedIn Learning, as you can read here, has thousands of high-quality video tutorials taught by respected authorities in their fields, and there's varied, various topics. You can sign up here by selecting the link and using your library card number and PIN to join. 
and create an account and then go from there. It is free to you. Once again, thanks for joining and have a good one.